Okay, welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about my January 2022 TBR. First off, I've seen a sudden growth and spike in subscribers and those who are liking and watching and engaging with the channel. And I just have to say thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. I love communicating with those who, who watch my, my, uh, my videos and who engage with the love of books that I have. I, I don't know. I don't know how to express my gratitude. But thank you so much for being here and for choosing to watch my videos. Out of all the videos that are on, on YouTube, it means the world to me that you've decided to sit here and watch mine. Can you believe it's 2022? That is a sci-fi year. Like... <laughs> I can't, there's probably a gajillion books in the sci-fi genre written for in the future year, 2022, we're going to have flying cars, we're going to have talking animals, you know, like, I just can't believe that it's 2022. Uh, but here we are. And so I have some really exciting books, actually, that I want to start this next year with. Some of these are connected to my 2022 goals, which I will have released, I think, a couple days before this one. So uh, you can look at that if you want to see more about like how some of these choices came to be. Uh, and some of these other books are just books that I want to read uh, because I decided to start this year off with no readathons, no kind of specific constricting factors in that regard. Um, I do have some reoccurring things that will be happening every month, but besides that, this month I wanted to leave it open and free to pick what I wanted to read. However, this first book is part of kind of those reoccurring challenges, and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray. So every month I'm going to be buddy reading a classic with Yolene over on Yolene Reads. This is a very flexible schedule with what we're going to read and when we're going to read it, and if we will be buddy reading or not. Uh, I know that I will be reading a classic every month. Sometimes it will be with Yolene, sometimes not. But I think part of the joy of classics is that you can talk to someone about them and talk about the themes and the ideas that you get from them. So if you're also interested in reading these classic books uh, with us, let me know in the comments down below. And if we have enough interest, maybe we can make like a read along, a buddy read along uh, for this series in general. But we do have a couple books picked out for the first couple months. And for January, it is The Picture of Dorian Gray. Uh, for February, we will be reading uh, Pride and Prejudice. The Picture of Dorian Gray is a book I have wanted to read for years, so many years. And it's so short that I, I don't know why I haven't picked it up. There's literally been nothing stopping me from it. I just haven't done it. So this is the year that I do it. This is the year that I pick it up. I really feel like I'm going to love it because I love when um, authors kind of poke fun at the time in which they lived, and I do believe Oscar Wilde is very good at that. Uh, the Importance of Being Earnest is one of my, uh, one of my, uh, it wasn't in my top 20, but I really adored that book last year. Uh, had so much fun with it. I laughed out loud multiple times. Uh, he just has a way of poking fun at things where the person being made fun of doesn't know they're being made fun of. <laughs> and when the person, the person being made fun of is a whole era of time, I just, it's so much fun. So I'm looking forward to the picture of Dorian Gray and the commentary that he has, you know, included in it. So that will be the first thing that I will be picking up in January. Actually, that might not be true because I think the first book I'm going to be picking up is The Veiled Throne by Ken Liu. So I read The Grace of Kings and The Wall of Storms at the end of last year, maybe in November and December of last year. And this series shot to an all-time favorite spot for me. I am in love with it. I'm obsessed with it. I cannot get enough. And I didn't read The Veiled Throne immediately after The Wall of Storms because there were some things I really wanted to close out in December. So I, you know, pushed it off my TBR, but I, I can't hold myself back like any longer. So actually that may be the first one that I pick up, pick up despite uh, wanting to read Dorian Gray. I think the first one's going to be The Veiled Throne. The Dandelion Dynasty is an epic, large-scale, political, like over many years fantasy uh, that is heavily based on Chinese uh, history, but kind of, you know, expands upon and separates from that uh, in each book that he writes. And this series is 
incredible. The detail that Ken Liu goes into in this world, the, the linguistics of it, the engineering of it, the character work. Oh my God, it is so, it is so good. Uh, and this was in my top 20 books of the year. So if you watch that video, you may have seen me talk about the series. Uh, but the other final point I want to make here uh, as like a pitch for it is that the women characters in this series are phenomenal. Like those of us in the, you know, fantasy space, sometimes we have, we complain quite often, actually, not sometimes, about male authors not being able to write women. Ken Liu does not have that issue. <laughs> He's got it down pat because his female characters are fantastic. So The Veiled Throne is the third book in this series. Uh, the Wall of Storms, oh God, it tore my heart out. So like I'm terrified for the Veiled Throne, like I'm not ready for what he's gonna do to me because I'm sure it's gonna be terrible but beautiful and wonderful at the same time. Like I'm not ready, but also I need it. So I will be picking this up ASAP, probably the first book in January. The next book is actually a self-published book and that is Gunmetal Gods. So I've been eyeing this up ever since I took part in the India Chords Readathon last year and people kind of mentioned it, you know, on uh, the Discord we had there in passing and I just didn't have time to get to it that year, but it's, you know, like piqued my interest at the time and I kept kind of looking at it as something I wanted to pick up after that. And then Steve over on Steve Talks About Books and Stuff, uh, he actually announced that he's doing a read-along for this with a uh, conversation about it on January 30th. And that was like, what better time to pick this book up? So I haven't officially like joined the read-along, but I definitely plan to. Uh, Steve actually does an amazing job of creating community spaces where you can read along, where you can talk to authors. The number of author interviews he's done since he's been on booktube is incredible. And he also does a really good job of promoting and talking about self-published and indie books. So if you're interested in that stuff, please go check him out. I really have so much respect for the work he puts in into creating like a community space people to engage together on stuff. So I will definitely be engaging with that uh, space when I read Gunmetal Gods, but I'm so excited for this book. Basically what I know about this book is that you have a main character, Mika, I believe, whose daughter was taken by like the king, the main kingdom. And so in revenge, he has raised this like rebel army and he's going to attack this kingdom. And then there are those who are like famous soldiers who are in defense of that kingdom. And uh, the main soldier from that group, I think his wife died or something like that. Something, some tragedy happened and he's basically wallowing in that sorrow and he's not really battle ready. Um, and so it kind of sets up this world where these two figures clash against each other and the gods supposedly choose sides. I have been loving the meddling gods trope. That's also a huge trope in the Dandelion Dynasty and I eat that shit up. I love it so much. And so this book is also giving me those vibes and I'm just, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to pick this up. My next book was actually chosen for me as part of this like Secret Santa thing we did uh, in the Only Good Book Club. And uh, we all picked books for each other to read that we thought the other would like. And so Shamla has decided that I will like Neon Gods. Now I do love me some romance and some smut. I just don't tend to pick it up on my own. So I'm actually very excited to get to this. And I actually mentioned Meddling Gods in the group chat and she was like, oh, if that's what you're into, let me give give you gods meddling with each other. So this is apparently a Hades and Persephone retelling. I'm not super versed in that particular lore, but give me any mythology, you know, based story I'm in, I'll give it a shot. So I'm very excited to read this. I've seen some good reviews. I've heard it's steamy and I'm just looking forward to this read. I think I'm really going to like it. The next book is also connected to the Only Good Book Club, and that is that Deidre is doing a Suki Stackhouse read-along uh, on her channel for this whole year. So I've never read the series. I never saw True Blood. Maybe I saw a uh, like an episode here and there, uh, but I never actually watched True Blood, so I don't know almost nothing about the series, uh, but I'm excited to try something new. So I will be joining in this read-along uh, for January. And the first book is Dead mm. Ever After. So I will be checking this out from my library, joining in with the read-along. I'm excited to see if I like it, you know? Why not read outside of my comfort zone every once in a while? This next book is also connected to the Only Good Book Club, but that is The Helm of Midnight. Now, this was gifted to me by the lovely, lovely Sarah. 
Uh, I had this on my wish list from the beginning of last year. It's this like horror fantasy like remix of um, there's this helm that has the soul of a serial killer contained within it and then these thieves steal the helm from where it is being kept and the spirit of the serial killer escapes and ends up you know going on a killing spree and they have to stop this from happening the characters in this book I assume um, and I have wanted to read this ever since I saw the blurb. I just never got to it last year. And Sarah, who is just a wonderful human, sent this to me. It is beautiful. I cannot wait to get to it. Uh, so I'm immediately putting this on my January TBR. Uh, I really think I'm gonna love this. I'm getting five star vibes from this. So I will definitely be picking this up in January. Continuing with the physical TBR, I have The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is a book I've been wanting to read since I purchased it last year. I mean, this cover was something I couldn't pass up. How many times have I mentioned I love the idea of meddling gods, gods that actually function in today's world. I love it so much. Uh, and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. I think I'm going to adore it. So I want to prioritize this, especially as the second book I think is coming out in the beginning of this year. And it just did the cover reveal and it is so beautiful. And like, I want to buy it knowing that I love the series, not just buying it based on the cover. You know, like I want to solidify that. Uh, although that cover is so pretty, I might not be able to resist anyway, but <laughs> I definitely want to read this book. So uh, this is definitely a high priority for me this month as well. Basically what I know about this book is that there were once like giant Goliath gods that walked this earth uh, and supposedly don't exist anymore. Um, and there are some characters, maybe one is depicted here, not sure yet, but we have some characters in this book who go around harvesting the bones of these gods because they fetch a really good market price. Uh, and that's kind of generally what I know, and also that it's based on North mythology. I already said, give me mythology, I'll eat it up. So very excited to get to this one as well. And we might as well do the third physical book I have already chosen, which is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. Now, this is the second book in the, um, what's it called? The something trilogy. Eto... The Farseer Trilogy, that, yes. So this is the second book in the Farseer Trilogy. I loved the first one. I wanted to get to the, the sequels last year, but you know, burnout happened, it, it just didn't happen. So this year I wanna prioritize trying. Okay, this is a loose goal. I didn't include it in my 2022 goals, but I wanna try to read one book in the realm of the elderlings every month, at least one. So this would be Royal Assassin for this month. I have the gorgeous illustrated edition and I'm very excited to continue this story. I do have a couple other books that I want to talk about and add to this TBR, but uh, while we're talking about the physical books that I want to read, I'd like to kind of start the new challenge that I have this year, which is to pull um, a piece of paper out of this <coughs> container. Ooh. This container that I have behind me on my bookshelf, I have all of my physical books that I have with me in Japan in here, and I would like to pull two every month to read uh, and make sure that I blow through my physical TBR by the end of this year by physical TBR in Japan. This is not scratching the surface of what I have in the States, but we're doing what we can, okay? So for this month, the two books I will be reading are, okay, here's one, here's two. Okay, the first one I will be reading is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have had this book for so long. And when I moved to Japan, I was like, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna find time to read this. Have I? No. So am I in the mood for this book? Also no. <laughs> Is this a good chance to finally attack this? Yes. So, all right, I will be reading Moby Dick <laughs> as well as Guns, an American Conversation from Spaceship Media. Now this is a shorter book. This is a book I actually got from my parents for Christmas because I'm someone who likes looking at different viewpoints uh, of a, a certain issue. And even though I may have my own view of things, my own way that I think is correct, I like reading what other people think, what other people have to say about it. And this book specifically talks to people from all ranges of the gun conversation in America uh, and kind of puts them in one book. It's a short book, so I am excited to actually get to that one. So that'll be a nonfiction for me this month. I have so many fantasy books and I get a classic and a nonfiction in my first poll. <laughs> 
there are two books left on this TBR. This next one is an anticipated read, and that is Where the Drowned Girls Go by Shauna McGuire. This is the sixth, seventh, I feel like seventh uh, installment in the Wayward Children series, and uh, apparently this follows new characters in a new school from the one that we've been introduced to in the first um, set of books. If you haven't heard of the Wayward Children series before, it's a portal fantasy uh, series of short novellas where we follow kids who have gone through to find their their Narnia, their world. They go through a wardrobe, a door, a chest, uh, and enter a world that is perfect for them, that they match to. And then through all different kinds of circumstances and situations, they end up having to come back to this world. And they have a hard time adjusting and coping because they feel like this isn't where they belong anymore. Um, and a lot of these kids have gone through different, very different experiences, but they're able to connect on this particular issue. And so they are sent to this school that is built specifically for kids who've gone through this. And so in every book, every novella, we follow a different character as they journey through, you know, this recovery or maybe going back to their world, maybe not, uh, and trying to figure out what they want to do with their life going forward. And this is the seventh installment in this. And I have loved this series all the way through. There were some that were stronger than others, but they always have this kind of intangible, whimsical nature that other books just haven't been able to replicate. And I'm so excited to read the new one. The last one is actually a recommendation again from The Only Good Book Club from Yanni, and that is, I believe it's pronounced Talk To Me. Uh, it's a collection of Arctic horror stories. Uh, they're all short stories, so it's an anthology. And one of my goals this year is to kind of hit my horror stride and start figuring out what I like in horror, why I like it, so I can start picking reads that, that hit better because I feel like I like the genre, but I haven't found five stars that really work for me yet. And she was saying how much she really enjoyed this anthology of stories from different perspectives. And I am so excited to get to this. Uh, I do have this downloaded, so I know I have access to it. And I, I don't know, I just really want to explore different ways of looking at horror and see if I can find what works for me. Do I know much about it? Not really. It's coming off of a recommendation. I like the vibes. It's got indigenous voices. Bring it on. So that will be the last book of this TBR. That concludes my January TBR. I've got a bunch of different genres going here. More classics than I expected, but here we are. That's the point, right? <laughs> we are back to the ambitious TBR vibes of this channel. I'm happy to be back to it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these, uh, if you're interested in buddy reading any of the classics. Uh, I'd love to chat with you guys down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell. I'd love to have you as part of this community, and I appreciate it. But for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny.